cum aici de prețeva prin engleză. Am fost scurt în prețeva și după aceea începem. Hello everyone, thank you so much uh, for coming here today. It's a pleasure to have you in the press conference with the Commissioner Master. Thank you once again for coming. And MEP Salim Moisa, thank you so much for organizing this event. Um, in terms of uh, proceedings, I propose that, uh, that Mr. Moisa starts with the results of the national consultation that has been taking place the past few months. Then basically there will be a handover of concrete handover of the results with Michelle Mastrom, a few messages, and we're very happy to take your questions. Thank you so much. Mr. Moisa. Okay, thank you everyone for, for coming. Uh, I'm really extremely excited to have uh, Cecilia Mastrom uh, participate in this event, which is uh, the, uh, the coronation, I say, of uh, a huge and very important project for myself and my team. Since May this year, we have been uh, uh, scanning very, very carefully the entire Romanian economy as well and systematically as it is, uh, in order to see what the priorities, sensitivities, uh, uh, wishes of various Romanian stakeholders, in particular in the economy, but not only, I also discuss with unions, with NGOs, civil society, what these sensitivities and priorities are in the uh, context of the TTIP negotiation, you know, in this huge historic negotiation between the US and, uh, and Europe, which is, a, as far as I'm concerned, a vital uh, Europe and, in my opinion, the United States. Uh, the, uh, uh, the results of the national consultation, which I would say, are quite, uh, quite uh, spectacular in, the, in, the, in their depth and in their, their diversity. I have found quite a number of Romanian economic sectors that, that are concerned by this. I have found spectacular uh, success stories. Ten of them are included in, in, your, in your files, if you want to take a look. Of, of a successful Romanian uh, companies uh, defying the, the, let's say, usual, habitual, uh, historic uh, pessimism or fatalism about success in Romania and being extremely successful, challenging even top players on, the, on, on, on certain goods in the US, in certain uh, niche markets um, uh, for, for already quite a number of years. So uh, we have a number of 31 uh, suggestions or requests or demands uh, in the economic sphere. Uh, we have six in the in the in the uh, environmental social uh, uh, spheres. Out of well, very interesting, out of those 31, only one is a clearly defensive Romanian interest. That's the poultry industry. Both Romanian industry and society would prefer not to have uh, chlorinated chicken. Uh, and in general, they, they feel, I mean, there's the, there's the values part or the, the social preference part and there's the, uh, the part uh, dealing with, uh, you know, industrial competitiveness. They feel that the standards that they are subjected to are so much higher along the entire chain that it would be unfair for them to be exposed to compete with the, with, with the U.S. Uh, uh, in, in, that, in that sector. So there we would urge you to, to keep a degree of protection. Uh, but for most other sectors, and I will enumerate some of them now, uh, we are quite offensive. I mean, Romania can win. For instance, footwear industry. There are very high tariffs in the US. We would like those to be removed. And we have players on the market that would take advantage of that. In the ceramic sector, the same. Uh, uh, taxes to ceramic uh, exports from Romania and the EU uh, can be as high as 28% in the US. That's, it's huge. It's huge. It's, it's, it's strange for the world we live in to have such, uh, such tariffs. Uh, on, uh, on, in the ITC sector, Romania, it, it, it's, a, it's a powerhouse in the ITC sector. It would not want to have data localization in, uh, in the TTIP, or it would want to see the TTIP exclude the obligation or the possibility for certain states, member states, to, to force companies to localize data on their territory because our industry feels it's, it's so confident that it feels we, no, we, we could be competitive here. It should be the market and the, 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 the local uh, uh, skills to decide rather than some, some, uh, some legal obligation. Uh, for the software engineering uh, industries and, and other service providers, uh, free circulation or the possibility, the facilitation of visas for short-term travel in order to, to, to respect uh, uh, services contracts 
because otherwise we have an absurdity. You know, you sign a contract, you cannot deliver because your, your, your worker doesn't have a visa to go for three days to the US to do the maintenance of your software. This does not make much sense. Uh, liberalize the energy markets. We have uh, a significant energy intensive in sector still in Romania. We have expensive energy in Europe in general. We have cheaper energy in the US. We believe, they believe, these industries have confirmed this general European trend that we'd want to have a liberalized energy market between us and the US, in particular LNG, but also, also oil. Uh, so this, this almost surprised me coming out as a, a significant priority from very, very uh, so, uh, active, concrete Romanian actors. You know, I knew it was a European priority already. Um, we have uh, small and niche uh, cases which I will not uh, raise in detail uh, now. For instance, uh, Americans uh, impose uh, UV lamps on mineral water uh, being exported to the US, whereas we have original purity by definition in Europe, otherwise you don't put it on the market. This creates separate bottling lines, I mean forces companies to do separate bottling lines. It doesn't make much more sense. Uh, you know, uh, European, uh, Americans could recognize that our standards already meet theirs in this particular uh, case. Romania seems to be uh, still on a so-called B list of uh, uh, certain sensitive technologies which cannot be exported to Romania and other countries which are on this list uh, unless they, they get a, a special license, which is a bit bizarre. We are an ally and uh, it, it's, it's, it's a hindrance to, to competitiveness and to companies who cannot buy uh, equipment at certain levels that they, they, they would want to have because uh, they simply cannot or it's, it's, it's burdensome. Uh, uh, the, uh, the U.S. does not recognize the, uh, the, no, the SPS uh, market, of, I mean, the integrity of the union. Uh, we have the uh, FSIS, uh, the, 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 the uh, sanitary inspection of the U.S., having to, to, uh, to uh, accredit both individual uh, Romanian slaughterhouses, for instance, for meat exports to the U.S., uh, and the entire Romanian system is not considered as equivalent either at this point. So it would make much sense that uh, you know, we have a mutual recognition of, uh, of inspections and inspection systems in the SPS area. Um, <clears throat> for uh, things such as uh, you know, recognized equivalence of welding procedures. No, welding on a fire is, as far as I know, uh, as hot in the US as it is in uh, in, uh, in Europe, and um, uh, the, uh, uh, for instance, non-destructive testing procedures, the same, you know, uh, material resistance is probably this, is very similar. Uh, we rely Europeans traditionally on German standards, which have become by and large European standards. They are very solid. There's no reason whatsoever that companies should create sort of two streams, two logics when operating uh, in order to export to the US. They need to be certified, audited, that their welding and their welding workers uh, respect uh, US standards, that's, that's really absurd because I'm sure uh, an equivalence can be easily found. This is really common sense. Um, on uh, very interesting, and this is uh, probably the last example I will, I will give now in order to wrap up. Uh, I have a case of furniture, a uh, furniture exporter to the US, which is concerned directly by the TPP, the competing agreement that the US has just uh, signed with the Pacific uh, Rim countries. Uh, their main rival, which is the company they used to work for, uh, and that company was selling under its own brand uh, until 2007, uh, has moved this production to Vietnam. This Romanian company then went under its own brand into the U.S. market. It grew. It sells through 66 shops in the U.S. They are here in the, in the exhibition as well. Uh, so they are competing with the former uh, sorry, master company, let's say. Uh, now their worry is that the master company, I mean the former company for which they were working, now their main competitor in the U.S. market, uh, would, would have better access to the U.S. market following the TPP. There are, there's still some, some tariff protection there. And this might reduce the margin of the Romanian company and even you know, either create problems or you know, forcing it to downsize or even exit the, 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 the U.S. market. So it, it's not that there's a problem with access as it is, but the, the comparability with what other competitors get uh, through the TPP is what's important for them. So this is a beautiful case where, where big uh, you know, geopolitical or you know, big strategy also meets very, very concrete uh, you know, a, a furniture factory in, in, a, in a Romanian region, really is concerned by what happens in between Vietnam and the US at this stage with the, with the TPP. On the, um, on the social and environmental uh, side of the, of the, of the debate, 
the, one of the interesting uh, ideas that I heard is that we should avoid the erosion of the EU system of collecting bargaining using the TTIP. I do not think this is happening, but no, I have heard this with such insistence that I'm duty bound to mention this to you. Uh, I have not spotted myself in the reading room so far something that would lead there, but uh, I have to, to mention this. And also, from the unions as well, uh, we heard that uh, we should have um, uh, an SME, a strong SME chapter, because SMEs are more vulnerable. Uh, and it's true, this is one of the horizontal things that I have also been hearing from the SMEs, that it's very difficult to get uh, s s uh, systematized information about, okay, I'm an SME, I want to enter this, uh, I will sell this product to the US market, what do I need to respect? They say it's a bit messy, it's difficult for them to have all the information in a, in a systematic way. So if we have a, an SME chapter which creates this SME portal that uh, you know, Ignacio and, uh, and, and others uh, have been discussing about with the uh, American counterparts, it would be great, it would be really, you know, I was even surprised to see how, how much demand, it's almost, it's a horizontal thing from everywhere there is about this. So uh, there are other issues, but I cannot raise everything now. I, I, I gave, uh, I believe, uh, a bit more than just the flavor of it. I would like to hand this over to you now uh, formally. This is the, the, the results of, of our work for uh, of, uh, of, uh, five, uh, five months. And um, I hope uh, at least 80% uh, of them will be able to be in the treaty in the end. I'm quite sure most of them have common sense. Uh, with, with many of them, we can also work with other Euro member states because, you know, footwear industry, you still have that in, in Italy, in, in Spain, in Portugal, in France to some extent. So, you know, hopefully uh, we can uh, gather the clouds necessary to, to bring most of these uh, into the treaty itself. Anyway, I will be uh, stubbornly um, following up on that with you and uh, your team. That, thank you very much, uh, Sorina. I will read this with, with great uh, attentivity and, and attention uh, and really look into all these details. I remember when we spoke earlier this spring, you were telling me about this idea that you were going to do and fixing a date for a conference when you said it. And it sounded enormous, the project that you were outlining. Uh, but you did it, and I want to congratulate you for that. It is very, very important that we get this kind of input. Of course, we're trying to get it from many countries, listening to, to companies and different stakeholders to make sure that what Ignacio and what me and all the whole team is doing in TTIP is relevant for people. So we don't discuss just you know, holistics, but, but really things that, that, that can matter. Many of the things that you, you raised here, and of course I need to look at all the details, are addressed. Tariffs, uh, some of the, the, uh, the, the certification and inspections uh, and so on. Some uh, maybe not yet, but this could be an occasion to, to deal with this. And uh, also when we are talking about regulatory convergence, we are trying to set up a process for the future as well. We could agree on a few issues, but this would be a dynamic process where we can bring, when we have enough data, we can bring in new items as well. Uh, of course, not all things can be sold by TTIP. I want to be, be, be clear about, about that. But I, I am impressed by, even if you look at the, the, the total figure of uh, Romanian um, commercial exchange with the US, it might not be very big, but you have small companies, quite small companies, who have really dared and have the courage to enter the, the American market and who want to do more. So there is this positive aggressiveness and, 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 uh, and optimism, which is quite impressive. And as you say, small and medium-sized companies are the potential biggest winners with an agreement like this, and that's why we are giving particular attention to this through a dedicated chapter, through this idea of a website to facilitate their daily life and uh, any other proposals that might come up to, to facilities. So I read this with great interest. I want to thank you for the enormous work that you and your team have done. It is really useful for us, and I think this conference, well, so far at least, I know there's an ambitious afternoon as well, ha have been, been very, very uh, important. I'm happy I, I was able to, to participate, so thank you so much. Um, I was just curious, how do you see resolved this legislation conflict, legislative conflict between ICSID and the European Union on the specific case of uh, Mikula Brothers' case? 
The, this is something that has been going on for a very long time, and, and I, I cannot comment on, on individual cases, so, so I, I, I am not in, in a position to comment on this. I, I take note that this was raised in a particular situation, a very pre-entry and, and the, the early entry of, of Romania. Clearly, the situation is totally different uh, today, but that, that is history. It has to be dealt with, but I am not in a position to, to, to comment on that. But do you have in mind a, a way or solution in order that all the European Union decision to be recognized also in the United States on specific areas like, for example, uh, state aid? No, we are not negotiating state aid uh, with, with the US. We are looking at, well, of just course... just an example. Yes, we, we are looking at uh, the issue of state-owned companies in order to, to make sure that the level playing field is there. Uh, but uh, we have a lot of internal regulation in the European Union. Uh, some of them is, is growing, some we are still differing in internally, and that is our work to be done. TTIP is big enough as it is. We are not bringing all our problems uh, in, into TTIP. Um, I'm from an uh, agricultural uh, magazine um, in Romania, and uh, I was wondering if there are any chances to close this deal before the Obama administration is uh, finishing its mandate, uh, as I heard today that there are some chances. This is the intention. Both me and my, my political counterpart, Ambassador Mike Froman, who is the USTR, the US Trade Ministry, if you want, uh, we meet regularly to take stock of where we are in the negotiations. And we are very committed to do our utmost to see if this can be closed. Uh, of course, not voted and ratified, but, but the agreement can be reached before the end of the Obama presidency. And that means end of next year. It is possible, uh, and we will do our utmost. Then, of course, there depends on the content. It has to be a good agreement that, that Serene and his co friends in, in the parliament can, can approve and member states. Uh, and also, uh, you know, the Americans are entering into election campaigns, so that can, can play in. It doesn't so far, but, but it can. But it is possible, it's feasible. I hope it will be done, uh, but of course, no promises can be made. And I have another question. Uh, will uh, this treaty have an impact on the way the, that agriculture is, uh, um, let's say, uh, has subventions in Europe, and also the system in uh, USA is uh, about uh, risk coverage now, so it, it will have an impact on these types of, uh, let's say, how the government helps the farmers or not? No, the, the issue of uh, domestic support in agriculture is an issue that is globally discussed. It's actually one of the most trickiest issues in the Doha negotiations, where the whole world is engaged and where 161 countries will meet in Nairobi in December to try to close, close the, the Doha round. And domestic support in agriculture is one of the most trickiest issues there. We have done some important reforms uh, from the European Union side, uh, but uh, and the... the, the the level of support in here is not negotiated in TTIP. From my previous life, I can fully confirm all that, yes. <laughs> Hello, my name is Mihai Kalina. I'm a health journalist. Uh, the partnership has raised some concerns with the European public health uh, uh, community, uh, and I'm just going to mention a few issues uh, on drugs, the fact that patent protection uh, for originator medicines might increase and thus uh, delay access to more affordable uh, generic drugs. Uh, the second one, that by lowering t uh, tariffs to certain unhealthy products such as uh, processed foods, uh, this might have an impact on uh, uh, chronic diseases. Um, and uh, a, a third question, um, on the new EU trade strategy, uh, the public health uh, community um, uh, says that public health uh, is completely missing from, from this. So I'd like to have your views on this. former position, so maybe if you want to. On, on processed food, well, we already know today that, that, that junk food is usually cheaper than, than, than more, more, more um, 
uh, you know, biologically fabricated or, or other food. That, that, that is I indeed a problem. There could be uh, such effects with increased trade uh, as well, but there's a limit to what we can do uh, to, to you know, tax this. And to Some countries are actually taxing unhealthy food, sugar and so on, but this is a national decision. So, so we will have to, to work with you know, journalists like you and then, then the community to keep on working with the communities to try to, to inform about the health, the risks, the possibilities and so on. And then by informing consumers, you will have to rely on their, their, their choices uh, as well. Uh, public health um, is, is important in, uh, in all trade agreements in, in the way that we are not want to do anything that undermines public health. And we do not want to do anything that forces countries or municipalities to change the way they organize their public health system. So that, that is privatizing it or, or, or uh, uh, allowing against their will for, for, for foreign competition. That is, that is a decision that is made uh, within the communities and nothing in TTIP or in other trade agreements will force to open up those markets. So in that way, it, it is very much uh, protected. And then, of course, we, I mean, we, we try work a lot in the European Commission with, with public health issues. The, the commissioner responsible for this, Mr. Androkaitis, is one of... I, I would say together with Commissioner Hogan, who is the, the Agriculture Commissioner, those two people are the ones I, I connect with most often to discuss all the elements of, of a TTIP to make sure that they are involved and that they come with their input. So, so we do take it into consideration, but my, maybe the word doesn't figure so much in, in, in the trade strategy. Uh, oh, yeah, the drugs issue. Uh, so that we were going to, to uh, compromise on... No, no, it's not. It's not in the. Uh, it's not in the uh, the negotiations. No, so that will not change. No. Hello, my name is Dankar Gunaru. I'm a Romanian journalist from European PEF. Uh, it's a European Affairs uh, magazine, and we are making the live streaming now. So my question is: Everybody is talking when we debate TTIP about the risks and opportunities, which are still the risks if we don't have TTIP, because two days ago. We have the closed uh, discussions on uh, TPP. Uh, do you have an, ev uh, an evaluation regarding the impact of this TPP on the negotiation with the American uh, partners? And which, uh, which will be the costs if finally we won't have still a TTIP for the European Union? Thank you. It's a very important question that you raised there. We do not have such impact assessment studies of, of the costs of non-TTIP. And it is clear, I mean, we will not stop stop trading with, with the US. We're not moving back to the caves. Uh, US is still a very important partner in many regards, but we will be missing a lot of opportunities. Sorin has just outlined only a few <coughs> Romanian examples where by getting rid of the tariffs, by, by getting rid of some of the bureaucracy, they might be able to, you know, to focus that attention to employ a few people more, invest a little bit more, and thereby increasing employment and, and possibilities. And there are thousands of companies like this in the European Union who might lose those possibilities. That is on a, on a micro level. And then, of course, if the two biggest partners in the world who share a lot in common, even if we don't agree on everything, that, that, that is correct, but if we fail with this, what si kind of signals do we send to the rest of the world? That, that, that would have a geopolitical um, aspect that I think it's important to, to underline. I think the ambassador mentioned that there is one man in Moscow who will laugh his head off if this fails, uh, and, and others uh, as well. So we will be losing uh, a lot of, of possibilities. Uh, that, that I think that would be a pity. I would, I would add to that. I probably can be a bit... Uh I mean, my approach can be a bit uh, um, more uh, cynical, if I may, in this regard. Uh, I believe this, the, the, the fact that the U.S. concluded the TPP uh, has to be, uh, on the one hand, it will provide, help the U.S. provide more focus to, to the negotiation with us. Well, that's clear, because so far they have been saying that you know, they focus on uh, TPP because it was more mature. It was being almost done, uh, and rightly so, it turns out. Um, and uh, on, on our side, I, I do believe that the, the TPP will have a 
trade diversion effect or a displacement effect for some of our companies, uh, for some of our businesses in the mid to long term, if we do not catch up by concluding the TTIP. I mean, it's a fact of life. It's how economic history works. If you, when you create a, a, a free trade agreement or a free trade area, more trade comes in within that trade area, between actors within that area, and some of that is diverted from other actors. In other words, Asian companies will, will, will increase their market share in the US at our expense, at the expense of other companies or economies that are now present on the US market. So this, I believe, creates a further incentive for us to have a, a TPP, but it should not lead to a light TTIP. I mean, just to have it for the sake of catching up quickly here and there, I still believe it has to be very thorough and comprehensive, because otherwise, if we leave all the difficult bits out and we only we, we collect the easy bits now, I, I don't think we will ever come back, because it would be very a very difficult political sell yeah, exactly. So uh, I hope uh, the TPP will have created the context for us to, to have uh, uh, all the focus in Washington and the motivation here to do this negotiation as quickly as reasonably possible without compromising on the depth of the negotiation because that is vital for us. Otherwise, if it's just a, a very light free trade agreement and we only remove uh, ceramics and footwear tariffs, we would be happy, some of our companies would be happy, but it would also be a missed opportunity on the, on the bigger picture on the longer term. One issue that has not been mentioned that we're also discussing in, in, in TTIP is the issue of values and um, rules, because we do commit to many of the joint values, not only between us when it comes to, to labor rights and fundamental rights and democracy, but we are also partners globally when it comes to setting high standards, protecting the environment, fighting against uh, the uh, fighting in favor of the eradication of child, child labor, of, of forced labor, protecting endangered species, having um, transparent and solid value chains. You know that there in many parts, for instance, in Africa, the, this is a very complicated issue leading to, to, to violence and rape and, and, and the terror of, of whole communities. So these are issues where we are fighting together on the globally, and we want to bring that intention in, into the chapter, into the negotiations uh, as well. We'll see how exactly we will phrase it. Uh, but, but those values are contested in the world today. So, so of course, with friends, you, you, if we can have an impact on that, that, that will be very important globally. That's a vital point for me and for us as Romanians who are closer to the areas where things are being contested. That's a vital point.